Welcome back. We are looking at mass flux or movement of ions when there is a simultaneous concentration gradient and electrical potential gradient. Okay. We have already seen the significance of the situation and now we are, we, we are going to look at the basis for the working of our senses. Okay. And the basis happens to be something called action potential and something called axial current. Okay, this is what we are going to see. And as you will see, the action potential arises because of the movement of ions across a neural membrane. We are getting to the crux in the relationship between ion fluxes across neural membrane and impulse conduction to and from the brain. I hope you saw the video uh, that was uh, the link to which was given uh, in one of the previous videos. The relationship as we already know is the essence of any of our sensory perceptions and our responses to them. Let us take a nerve cell that is initially at the resting membrane potential. Okay. That is uh, for our understanding, let us say that we are taking a nerve cell and let us assume that it is at resting membrane potential when we start our analysis, when we start our thought. Now, let us say at time t equals 0, this cell is stimulated by an image maybe, by something pricking maybe, by a nice smell, by a nice uh, taste and so on. Let us say that the cell is stimulated through a signal received from another cell, say from the eye neurons and so on and so forth through trans neurotransmitters at places called synapses and so on. Okay. You know some of this, so uh, I am not going to get into details of where the uh, current comes, where the impulse comes from. Or it could be by artificial means through electrodes in an experimental setup. Okay. So, the um, stimulation could either be natural, that is the situation that we are considering here, or it could be induced uh, in an experiment by electrical, uh, by electrodes. Either, in either case, when the nerve cell is stimulated, the sodium, sodium ion channels open up. When it opens up, the sodium concentration outside is usually higher than the sodium concentration inside. Therefore, the sodium ions move from the outside of the cell, causing the inside of the cell to become more positive. Because the sodium ions outside is moving inside, more number of positive charges are coming in and therefore, the inside of the cell becomes more positive. Therefore, the membrane potential moves away. Remember, the membrane, membrane potential is intracellular minus extracellular potentials. Okay? So, the membrane potential moves away because it is becoming more positive from its resting value of uh, let us say minus 70 uh, millivolts. Okay? And this is called depolarization of the membrane potential. Okay? The membrane potential is moving away from its resting value, uh, it is becoming more positive and therefore it is getting depolarized. Membrane potential moving away is depolarization. And in this case, because more positive ions are coming in, more positive sodium ions are coming in, it is becoming more positive. It is moving away from its resting value of minus 70 and it is getting depolarized. So, this is typically what happens. You have the time value here, axis here in milliseconds. This is approximately a millisecond. Okay. And this is the membrane potential in millivolts. We are at minus 70 here, 0 is here and 40 is here. Okay. So, here we are initially at minus 70, there is an, a stimulation and the sodium ions start coming into the uh, cell, thereby the membrane potential of the cell starts moving away from minus 70 and it is getting depolarized, the membrane is getting depolarized. As more sodium ions come into the cell, more number of sodium uh, channels open up 
and the membrane potential becomes more positive. Okay. So, it starts flooding in. When the value of the membrane potential reaches about minus 20 volts, okay, uh, this is somewhere here. So, here we will come to this in a little while. Here, when it reaches about minus 20 volts, which is somewhere here, the potassium channels open up and the potassium ions move from the inside to the outside of the cell. Why? The potassium concentration inside is typically higher than the, than the concentration outside and therefore, the potassium ions move through their ion channels from the inside to the outside. So, the movement is in the reverse direction. Potassium is also positively charged, the movement is in the opposite direction. The rate of sodium entry is higher than the rate of potassium exit when this happens and thus the membrane potential continues to become more positive okay, till it reaches about plus 40 millivolts all the way from minus 70 millivolts. At plus 40 millivolts, the sodium ion channels close and the rate of potassium exit become higher. When the, when the sodium channels close, the potassium channels are still open and potassium still starts going out. Okay. And um, the rate of sodium potassium exit becomes higher also. And therefore, the membrane potential starts decreasing again and it moves towards its resting value or it is getting repolarized. If it moves away from its resting value, it is called depolarization. If it moves towards its resting value, it is called repolarization. When the membrane potential reaches suitable values, the sodium and potassium, potassium and sodium channels close and the membrane potential stabilizes at its resting value of minus 70 millivolts after an undershoot and so on and so forth. Okay. So, this is typically what happens when sodium and potassium start moving inside out of the in and out of the cell and the movement is initiated by the impulse that is received by the cell. The sodium movement is initiated which is followed by the potassium movement when the cell gets stimulated. The stimulation could either be natural or could be induced by an electron. The dynamic response typically in milliseconds about 3 or 4 milliseconds if you you know 1, 2, 3 pretty much about 4 milliseconds or 3 milliseconds for till here of the membrane potential when the cell is stimulated is called the action potential. Okay? So, this change in membrane potential like this uh, when the cell is stimulated is called the action potential. So, the action potential is going to occur at one point on the membrane surface, sorry, on, on the cell surface, on, on the membrane of the cell. And some more details, I still haven't told you about the threshold value. The speed of sodium ion channel opening is faster than the speed of potassium ion channel opening. Okay, by the very nature of uh, the ion channels and the cap on the ion channels, one, one channel has cap on both sides. Uh, there are two caps, one cap versus one cap and so on and so forth. I am not going to get into the details of those. You can go and read about them. Okay. Some details at least. The sodium channel, channel has two gates, one on the extracellular side and the other on the intracellular side. The outside gate opens when the depolarization begins, but the inside gate is open at the resting potential and starts closing slowly with increasing depolarization. At about 40 millivolts, the inside gate of the sodium ion, sodium channel closes completely. 40 millivolts is the top, uh, the highest value. At about 40 millivolts, the inside gate of the sodium channel closes completely. The sodium channel closes at 40 millivolts due to the closure of its inside gate. But the potassium channel has only one outside gate, it does not have an inside gate on the extracellular side and that opens up and the strength of the stimulus is important. This, this is what I meant, the threshold. The strength of the stimulus is important. If it is not high enough to cause the movement of the membrane potential beyond a critical value of minus 55 millivolts, then no action potential 
uh, answers answers okay what i mean is if the strength of the signal is not high enough to cause the membrane potential to move beyond a minus 55 millivolts then there is no membrane potential at all it, it just this one just sorry then there is no action potential at all this uh, dynamics does not arise so the strength of the signal has to be such that it moves the membrane potential beyond minus 55 if that happens the action potential will automatically happen so let me repeat if the stimulus is not strong enough or high enough to cause the movement of the membrane potential beyond a critical value of let's say minus 55 millivolts then no action potential ensues and beyond the magnitude of the stimulus or beyond this magnitude of the stimulus any value however high then of course some broad limits causes the same magnitude of the action potential thus the action potential is an all or none phenomenon only if it crosses minus 55 is there going to be an action potential if it does not cross minus 55 millivolts there is going to be no action potential okay so this is the action potential which happens at a point on the cell membrane right because of the movement of because of the dynamics of the movement of the sodium and potassium ions now what is axial current to understand this let us begin at the starting point of the axon the sodium ions which move in at the starting point of the nerve cell can move intracellularly inside the cell to other adjacent locations we are starting here therefore we, are, we can consider the movement in this direction so the sodium ions which move in at the starting point of the nerve cell can move intracellularly to other adjacent locations in the cell therefore they can activate the sodium channels in the locations the adjacent to the starting point so this is the starting point so the sodium channel has come in now it can diffuse inside the cell when it diffuses inside the cell it can start up another action potential just next to the initial action potential therefore action potentials arise in adjacent location this in turn leads to action potentials occurring in other adjacent locations along the length of the nerve cell okay so sodium comes in diffuses sodium comes in potassium goes out and so on and so forth action potential then uh, at the same time sodium is diffusing then that is good enough to cause an action potential at a location just next to the original action potential the because of the second action potential there is still more sodium inside that is going to diffuse further that is going to cause a third action potential just next to the second action potential so you are going to go through a series of action potential along the length of this axon or the nerve cell. Thus the action potential gets propagated along the length of the nerve cell and thus the original stimulus gets transmitted across the nerve cell. That is typically what happens. There is a series of action potential because of that the stimulus is getting transferred across the nerve cell and this transmission can also be viewed as some axial current a current in the axis direction axis of the neuron direction axon direction so the transmission can also be view, uh, viewed as an axial current which is also called the cable current across the nerve cell so the axial current is responsible for all nerve conductions either from the sensory organs to the brain or from the brain to the other parts of the body maybe muscles and so on and so forth all those are possible only because of the series of action potentials which can be viewed as an axial current and all this happens in less less than uh, or in of the order of milliseconds or less okay so that is amazing please see this video nerve impulse molecular mechanism 3d animation this is the link to it please look at this video this will explain this uh, in a video form which would be uh, which would make things uh, easier to um, internalize to understand and so on and so forth
I think that's what I have for this class. Let us stop the class here. We looked at uh, action potential at a point and a series of action potentials along the length of the axon leading to an axial current, cable current, that is responsible for the conduction of impulses from the sense organs to the brain or from the conduction of uh, the instructions from the brain to the other parts of the body. See you in the next class. Bye.